Hi, Tony. Hi, Margot. Oh, don't say the TV's packed up again, yes. is it? Yes. Oh, dear. I'm not going to get a picture out of it no, like this. No, it doesn't look very good. I shall have to move the aerial later on, I well, think. Well, look, I'll fiddle around and see what I can do. You do that. Fine. Hello. Here we are. Another heartbeat and 25 minutes of new ideas. And the idea for today is moving images. Here's an image, and I'm going to move it. Well, bits of it anyway. The eyes and the mouth. Now, with a drawing like that, if we're going to make things move, there have to be holes for them to move in. So, what we shall do is whip away that piece, and you can see the holes that have to be made. Good. We'll put that out of the way for a moment, and look at these strips. The horizontal strip moves the eyes, and this one moves the mouth. What we need are slots and holes, paper fasteners, with a little cardboard washer. And you see this piece, I put the paper fastener through the slit, through the hole, and turn that upside down, and open up the paper fastener. Now, doing this, this is important. You want something like a pair of scissors so that you can put it up to the side of one of the prongs, push that down, then the other on the other side. And that means that the movement will be free and easy. Good. Get that in the middle, and we're ready to put in our eyes and mouth. Here come the eyes in the middle. And the mouth is closed, because that's how I've put it. So the closed mouth, there would be a bit there. And we could fill that in, of course, in ink, but it'll be quicker for me to show you. I've cut a black patch, you see, that can go under there where the mouth would be. So now we'll put this back and just test this. Is that going to work? Mouth action? Yes, very nice. And the eye action, that works too. Good. So now what I'm going to do, because I wanted to show you a colour one, is just remove those bits. Nice blue eyes for our character. Lovely, florid complexion. And we'll put our kernel into position there. And now we just need paper fasteners in the corners to keep everything steady. Oh, and incidentally, if uh, you want a fact sheet, you can send to our usual address for that, or you can see it in the BBC magazine Fast Forward. OK? Now, Colonel, off you go. <laughs> um, now, have a look at an animation. I wonder if you've ever seen one of these fascinating machines. What you do is you look through here and when you turn the handle, you see a wonderful moving image. It's all very clever stuff. This is actually one of the earliest forms of animation and it was very popular with the Victorians and the Edwardians who actually called it a what the butler saw machine because it used to show rather saucy pictures. But the real name for it is a mutoscope. And if you come round here, you'll see how this works. There are lots of separate images, literally hundreds of them, all together. And when you turn the handle, they flick past you very, very quickly. 
and your mind sees them as one moving image. Now, this machine was very kindly lent to us by the Penny Pier Arcade at Wookie Hole Caves. Of course, it's a very early example of animation techniques. They've become a lot more complicated since. We use lots of different techniques on Heartbeat. And I was very interested to find out a little bit more about this. So I had a look at a device the BBC have called a Rostrum Camera. Well, here we are in the BBC Graphics Department, and this is a Rostrum Camera. And this is actually the machine that's used to make most of the animations that you see on Heartbeat. And this section here is actually the camera itself. And it's got to be very rigid, so it's supported by two great big posts on the back. The whole machine's actually quite huge. And the camera itself is tilted on its side so that the lens here actually points downwards onto the artwork, which is secured very tightly on the baseboard so that it doesn't move around when it's filming. You don't want any blurring on the film. And the actual camera itself is operated very cleverly by a computer over here, which Colin's operating. And as you can see, the camera actually moves up. And in fact, it moves down as well. And the baseboard moves right the way around. It can go through north, south, east and west. And it can go in any sequence you want. Now, the actual work on this baseboard here it's the work of an animator that we've used on Heartbeat quite a lot, and her name's Alison Sherlock. Hi, Alison. Hi. Now, what are you doing here? Because I know this is the final sequence, but how do you actually start? I start off um, using a storyboard. There's a window with cross bars, and the arch of the window and the bars change into the arched chair in the garden, and then the arch there again goes into the conservatory trellis, and again, we have the ironwork here which is based on the arch and the background colours all sort of merge in with one another um, and the stairs come up through this and this is the point I'm at just now. Oh I see so that last one corresponds with the artwork That's on the board. Right. So once you've sort of worked out this storyboard mm -hmm. how do you work out how long you want the film to be? I very carefully take my storyboard and I work it out and write it all down on this chart okay. here. Um, I break up everything into seconds and then the seconds up into film frames. There's 25 frames a second and at the moment I'm on the 44th second. Which means how many frames? I've done 1,100 What a lot of frames! That sounds like a lot of work. When I go from one sequence to the other, I use a, a key um, shape or colour to build upon and then I keep adding the paint. Again, going back to my timing sheet so that I know where I am and I keep um, everything moving as it should so that when the film runs back you see it as a very fluid movement. I um, see. So what sort of material do you use? Just paint of it? Yes, it's acrylic paint which I use because it's, it dries very quickly and I can paint dark colours but then light colours on top. I can paint all sorts of things on top of its, itself. And the colours look wonderful on this, yeah. don't they? Of course, the, the thing is, Margaret, you do realise that I can't make a mistake. You can't, so... Because it, this only exists inside the camera. So do you have to actually go back the beginning if you make if something goes wrong yes yes and i haven't had to do that that's yet a, so that's a bit worrying on frame <laughs> 1075 or whatever you're on I know, so. well i think it looks absolutely wonderful i don't know if i'd have the patience to do that but thanks a lot for showing me and now we're ready to see the completed film